This is WOCA, Ocala, Gainesville, The Villages, 1370 AM, 963 FM, The Source. All right, 21 minutes after 9 o'clock. It turned out to be a pretty nice looking day. Huh? Valentine's Day is coming up Thursday. Are you looking forward to it, Robin? Oh, yeah, I am. Yeah. Do you know one of the things I, I look at uh, young kids and I think, oh, my gosh, that's the best time of your life because when you fall in love, you just send a Valentine. That's uh, it's not a big deal. Mm-hmm. Did you ever, did you ever like, you have your heart broken when you were a kid, though? Did yes. That, that, oh, did it? Really? Did you? I guess, yeah. Yeah. I, th- I think the, the, <laughs> it's it's part of life. And then when you look at a young child, you go, oh, they're going to have to go through that. Oh, boy, it's just so hard. Uh, Amalia Andrade is on the phone, and I hope I'm saying her name right. She has a book called You Always Change the Love of Your Life. I was reading the uh, review. I'm not sorry, the review, but the description on Amazon. And listen to this. Uh, a delightful, interactive roadmap for getting over a broken heart. Mm-hmm. With quirky illustrations, song lyrics that totally get it. Don't you love when a song gets it, by the way? Yeah, I do. Recipes for eating your feelings. Now, that's what I need right there. <laughs> <laughs> the unique comfort of making lists and much more. Um, sounds like a fun book. Amalia Andrade. Good morning, Amalia. How are you? I'm great. And by the way, you pronounce my name perfectly. Oh, good. I'm glad. Where are you calling from? Right now, I'm in Madrid, but I'm from Colombia. You're in Madrid. Wow. Yes, I am. Madrid. Uh, Madrid, España. I'm trying to think how to say something in Spanish, but I'm just drawing a blank. Uh, so, so tell me. Have you, oh gosh, have you uh, had a broken heart? Hi, what? Have you, bro- has somebody broken your heart? Oh my God. Yes. yes. Many, many times. <laughs> it's horrible. Yes. I wish I. It hasn't happened so so many times in my life because it's awful. Uh, people always ask me, like, what's the worst thing you can wish upon someone? Like, when you're feeling angry, you know, what's the worst thing you can say to them? And I always say that really, really the worst thing you can say to someone is, I wish you get your heart broken. That's horrible. That is horrible, uh, but yeah. But that's why... It is, it is, but that's why my book is here, to make you laugh about your heartbreak and to make you go through it and to keep you safe, basically. Did you write the book in Spanish and also in English, or is it in, in more than two languages? How, what, tell me about the languages of the book. Yeah, well, I'm Colombian, so the the book uh, came out first in Spanish, of course, and then, I don't know, I was lucky enough that it became a bestseller, so it's now in English, ah. Italian, German, Polish, Russian, oh, Turkish, really? yeah, really? all over the place, yeah, uh, really lucky girl. You created a, a, a perfect playlist on Spotify. Really? Yes, music is so important when you have your heart broken. And to me, I always remember these really important words by the important philosopher Frank Ocean, uh, who says uh, that when you are happy, you listen to the music. But when you're sad, you go to the lyrics, you understand the lyrics. And I think that it's so true i mean when we're happy we go like we don't pay attention to the lyrics that much and then when we're heartbroken the lyrics are like oh my god who wrote this for me like this makes sense and i think music is so important to healing so yeah there's a bunch of songs in in the book that i hope you guys enjoy so what is better if you if you just broke up with somebody and you're you can't stop crying is it better to listen to happy music and try to get over it or to dive into that sad stuff and just dwell there for a while dive yes no dive into the sadness really i think that's the best yeah to me i know some people are gonna say like hey no forget it get it over your i I don't know get over it and just dance I feel like when you're really heartbroken, you don't really want to feel like dancing. Uh, But also, I think that eventually you really need to feel all the feelings. Uh, Some of us just like, you know, shut our emotions or try to repress things. And that is the worst. Um, The book especially invites people to 
to realize that it's okay not to be okay, which seems very simple to do, but it's very hard because I think we live in a society that's always telling us that we need to be better, that we need to work harder, that yeah. we need to be pretty. I mean, everybody on Instagram is happy. There's nobody crying on Instagram, you know? And mm -hmm. when you're watching all these narratives all day, it gets to your head. So the book is basically there to, to make you feel like it's, that like it's okay not to be okay and uh, you right. also encourage people to create their own healing rituals yes healing rituals are very important because sometimes when we don't have like the correct tools to to overcome grief uh we just i don't know pretend that it just goes away without us doing anything like sit there because people tell you time helps heal and yes it is true but we also need to do to be proactive towards our own healing so some of the healing rituals are you know take a piece of paper and write all all the things that make you sad and then burn that piece of paper outside your house please i don't want anybody getting their places on fire but <laughs> yes yeah really so tell me about, tell me about a recipe that i i can understand this whole thing with a recipe you feel when you feel sad you go for the ice cream <laughs> <laughs> yes yes what what, what? Please, cookies Who? i don't go to ice cream i go to cookies cookies me too oreos and milk. yeah eat the whole bag yeah, me too. I also love Oreos and those Christmas Oreos. I buy so much of them that I, that I keep them like all year round for me. Uh, but yes, when we are sad, uh, food is really important. Uh, not only because we have an emotional connection to food, but also because actually nutrition has really, really special ingredients that can help our you know, neurological process of healing. So that food, that those recipes in there are very, um, like, made, tailored made for you to feel better. You know, men like to take their friend, like if a, if a male has a friend, male friend, who is heartbroken, he'll take him to a strip club. <laughs> 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 Yes, I know, but you know what? Huh. I also feel that, and that works. Like, the book also says, like, do whatever works for you. Like, don't let anybody judge you for whatever you think it's going to make you feel better. Like, just go ahead and do it. But, but also, I feel like, guys, they need to cry more. Like, don't you sometimes feel like Wait. watching Bridget Jones and... Who? And, and oh, I love, I love that. Yeah, yeah, Bridget Jones. No, I'm a, I'm a sucker for that kind of stuff. But I also get the strip club idea. I, I understand that whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, Amalia, thank you so much for being on the air with us. Uh, I found the book on Amazon. Do you have a website you want to recommend? Yes, it's AmaliaAndrade.com. And you're going to find everything in there that you need to know about me. All right, well, have a happy Valentine's Day. Thank you so much, Amalia. Thank you. Have an amazing morning. Thank you. We'll be right back. Fox News. I'm Chris Foster. President Trump holds a rally in El Paso, Texas tonight to talk about border security. The president mentioned El Paso in his State of the Union address last week in arguing for the wall he wants to build along the U.S.-Mexico border. Tonight's rally will be four days before a February 15th deadline for a congressional committee to come up with a border security plan to avoid another partial government shutdown. Fox's John Decker at the White House. Minnesota Senator